Welcome back to Movies TV Mad. You can follow me on Twitter at Movies TV Mad. And welcome to Monday's edition of the DCEU Daily. And take a look at this. This is very, very exciting because the Flash movie director Andy Machete, or shall we start calling him, him Sir Andy Machete, posted this. Now, this is very, very interesting indeed. Now, this could have been just a random post to celebrate Batman Day a day later, something he's mocked up. Or it could be something a lot deeper and more important. A big clue for the Flash movie, and I've been doing some investigating. So as soon as I saw this image from Andy Machete, I kind of thought this has to be some kind of character from the multiverse, a Batman who has the ability and command of the Speed Force, and people were saying the same thing. Now there is a character in DC Comics called Red Death. Now we're going to read an article about Red Death, a two-year-old article from Screen Rant. This is by Drew Ferguson. The Flash, the Flash, everything you need to know about Red Death. The DC Universe is known for its villains, and here is everything fans of The Flash will need to know about the new villain, Red Death. So it looks like this is not a very old villain in DC Comics. Dark Knight's Metal introduced quite a few new and pretty awesome characters into the DC Universe, one of which is Red Death, created by Scott Snyder and Greg Capello. Metal was one of the more recent DC events, so for those who may be a bit behind, Red Death probably isn't very familiar character. He has a pretty awesome story, and there's quite a bit of information to go through to get caught up. So let's get right into it. Let's take it from the top. In the alternate reality, Earth-52, Batman is still a crime fighter, as occasionally broken and dejected as the Batman we all know and love, is on our main view into the DC Universe. The Batman from Earth-52 became even more shattered by trauma. He fought alongside many different Robins, but many of them fell prey to the murderous hands of Minus-52, Batman's own rogues gallery. After outliving yet another Robin, Minus-52 Batman became obsessed with finding more extreme and more effective ways of fighting crime that plagued Minus-52 Gotham. There were too many crimes, too many disasters that he wasn't quick enough to save people from. He needed to be everywhere at once. He needed to be faster. He needed. He needed Minus 52 Batman decided. The only way to save his Gotham, to save his world from the festering forces of, destru of destruction that plagued mankind was to obtain the powers of the Flash. Minus 52 Batman acquired the weapons of many Minus 52 Flash's rogues gallery, including Captain Cold's freeze ray, Heat Wave's heat gun, Weather Wizard's weather wand, and Mirror Master's mirror gun. And with all of those at his disposal, he bested Minus 52's Flash after that Flash refused to surrender his powers to him. Minus 52 rendered the Flash unconscious and changed and chained him to the hood of the Batmobile, which Minus 52 Batman modified after obtaining designs for the Cosmic Treadmill. Minus 52 Batman drove both himself and Minus 52 Flash into the Speed Force with the Batmobile, and event merged them together, giving Batman control of the Speed Force and trapping Minus 52 Barry Allen inside that Batman's body. Wow! My name is Bruce Wayne. I am Vengeance. I am Justice. I am Batman. The Red Death. Wow, what a great concept this is. Now that he'd become Red Death, many of the villains in Gotham stood a little chance with his newfound powers. Red Death murdered the entirety of his rogues gallery in a misguided attempt at saving his planet. Shortly after, he realized that even with his rogues gone, and even with the power of the Flash, it was too late to save his planet. Until he was visited by another alternate version of Batman, the Batman who laughs. The Batman who laughs tells Red Death that he can still save his planet if he joins Barbatos. Dark Knights, in their plot to conquer a multiverse, 
Red Death accepted. The Batman who laughs, Invitation and travelled with him, and the rest of the Dark Knights to the, a version of the DC Universe we're almost familiar with. So that is the Central Earth. Now this is very, very interesting for the movie. Could this be what they're playing at? I mean, if, you know, let's get this straight. If this is what they're doing, then DC and Warner Brothers finally get it to embrace the comics and do something utterly ambitious. But would they would they go this deep? I'm not too sure. I hope that I hope I hope so because this is the kind of ambition we want to see in the new iteration of DC live action. Upon entering our own window into the DC universe, the Red Death attempted to kill the Flash. Red Death gained the upper hand in his attack, but the Flash was saved by Doctor Fate just before Barry would have been killed in the Flash's absence. Red Death infected Central City with a storm made of Speed Force energy, enabling him to rapidly accelerate the aging in others up to their death. Red Death made an attempt on Barry, uh, Barry's, uh, Barry Allen's loved ones uh, with his ability, but was stopped by Barry Allen when he returned. Now, this is interesting, because Red Death could go to the Central, could go to the Central Earth and then when Barry, I don't know how they could do this, but maybe when Barry kind of goes back to his world, right, they have this ultimate fight. Who knows? Could actually, could Michael Keaton's Batman be the villain of this story? Who knows? Who knows? It's very in intriguing, isn't it? At the Justice League, as the Justice League were on to a solution that would enable them to defeat the Dark Knights, the villains managed to trap them all in Batcave, specif specifically designed to hamper the abilities of the hero trapped inside. Red Death naturally trapped the Flash in a Batcave designed to dampen Barry Allen's powers. Red Death had also created a variety of different Flashmobiles with the intention of killing the Flash inside the trapped Batcave. Despite all of this, the Flash managed to elude Red Death yet again. While the Dark Knights were enacting their plan to infect the world filled with darkness, the Red Death was exposed to a burst of positive energy. This positive energy had a twofold effect. It changed his appearance, but more importantly, gave control of the body to Minus 52 Barry Allen. This Barry Allen was utterly crushed by what Minus 52 Batman Red Death had done with the powers they'd stolen from Barry and did what he could to help the Flash stop the Dark Knights. Red Death was, a, was in a group of Batman, and if we know anything about Batman, it's that they do their best to prepare for any eventuality. They've taken into account the dual minds trapped in Red Death's body, and concluded that they'd need to keep an eye on him to ensure they wouldn't be betrayed. Fortunately for them, and unfortunately for both Barry Allen's The Batman, who last reveals that the positive energy that infected Red Death would soon kill him moments later, 52 Barry Allen explodes, taking minus 52 Batman and in turn Red Death with him. Now this is interesting because we have seen another version of Barry Allen in the leaked kind of um, set pictures on location pictures of the Flash movie. So this could ring true. This is very interesting. It's certainly possible in an earlier episode of this season when Barry caught a glimpse of the future Flash Museum he caught a recording about one of the main antagonists from this season, Cicada. Now, they're talking about two years ago. I think they're talking about the Flash series now. In the recording that the speaker mentions that Cicada killed more people than even the Red Death. So is Red Death coming in, in, in a future seasons of the Flash? Well, it hasn't happened yet, and it looks, it's, it looks like it's coming to the movie. Maybe, if so, his backstory would likely to be altered in a major way, likely not including the Dark Knights whatsoever, but instead of Batman being the one merging himself with the Flash, what about an alternate version of Oliver Queen? It, it looks like the fans and journalists have better ideas than the Flash show writers. It hasn't happened. I don't imagine it to happen, because now it looks like it's going to happen in Andy Machete's Flash movie. Now, as I said before, this could obviously be something that was just for Batman Day, just a mock-up of the Flash symbol and, you know, the Batman insignia. But I very, very much doubt it. It's interesting that he waited a day after Batman Day to do this. So this is a huge tease. A tease. So I think this is definitely Red Death. 
Now, I wouldn't have known about Red Death unless it wasn't other comic book fans on the internet. I'm not going to pretend I knew anything about Red Death until I read that. A very interesting article loaded with so much. Now, Dark Knight Metal is a really great set of graphic novels, and this is not an old concept, and Red Death hasn't been around for a very long time either. But how could we initiate this? How can Andy Machete make this viable and a good story within this Flash movie? And so, is this Michael Keaton's Batman, or is this totally another Batman from another Earth? Now, we know that Barry Allen will interact with the multiverse in this movie, and we'll see multiple versions of the DC universes in this film. But it might not be Michael Keaton. But I do have a theory that Michael Keaton is only going to be in this film. That's my opinion. I, I could be wrong. I don't want that to be the truth. But let's just say this is in fact Michael Keaton's Batman 89 and Batman 92. Batman. What if he's so... I mean, say if he's so, so kind of battered down with the crime wave, he's getting older, he doesn't have the energy to fight the rogues gallery anymore. And what if he already did this to the Flash in his universe? And so maybe this Batman isn't going to help Barry Allen, but he's going to try and use Barry Allen to become Red Death if he isn't already Red Death. That's an interesting idea, isn't it? I, I really do think, and I mean, imagine if we have a bunch of Batman becoming villains from the multiverse and going to the central universe using Red Death's flash abilities of the Speed Force to speed to the central Earth and kind of create, what, you know, an invasion, a paradox. It, it, look, the more I hear about this movie, the more I'm thinking that this movie is bigger and huger than we ever thought. Maybe the invasion of Red Death and the other Batman is the reason that the multiverse is rebooted. Maybe it's not Barry that reboots the multiverse. Maybe it's Red Death. And maybe because he reboots the universe, there's no going back now. It is what it is now. This would be a very, very interesting way of doing it. And so, wow. I mean, these are just theories of mine. I'd love your Red Death theories in the comments down below. What do you think? Do you think that um, Red Death is part of Andy Machete's Flash movie. I, reading that, I definitely believe that now. Um, and you know, what are your theories of what could happen? Please comment down below. This is very exciting. I think it's been clear for a very long time that this was always going to be a huger movie than we could possibly imagine. And, you know, if Red Death does re reboot the universe with his Flash speed, because he could get there before Barry Allen, and Barry could be trapped in, in, in the earth he's created once he saves his mother's life. That, that could be a thing, and we still don't know how Sasha Calais Supergirl figures in this movie, whether she's already in the DCEU Earth 1, or he meets her when he creates in science, Flashpoint. So there's so many things we don't know. Will we find out more about this? Look. They're not going to give the game away at DC Fandome, but we could find out a little bit more. Just taking a break from Red Death, can I just say something? Again, people are saying that this is a Batman movie and not a Flash movie. So let me, uh, let me explain to you from the information I've garnered from my sources what this film is. And most of you already know this. This is a movie about a young man who's lost his parents. One parent is wrongly imprisoned for his wife's and Barry's mum's death, and the other parent was murdered. Now, in the Flash series, she's murdered in front of Barry. I don't know how they... We never saw the backstory, so we really don't know. So this is about a young man who can't accept the loss of his parents, the loss of his parental unit. So this... in By the unacceptance of this, initially, him and Batfleck try and investigate and prove his father's innocence, and it comes to no avail. So then he uses the Speed Force and he creates Flashpoint to undo his mother's murder. This is absolutely a Flash story focused on the Flash. And you saying this is a Batman movie doesn't change anything. It's just you with your agenda. 
right? Let's be absolutely clear here. You can focus a story on Barry Allen and The Flash, but you can still have multiple Batman and multiple Supermen and multiple versions of these DC characters in the whole of the Earth One Justice League. It can still be a great movie celebrating all these different multiple universes and DC characters, but still focus on Barry Allen. You can still do that. So this nonsense that this is a Batman movie, of course Batman's going to have a huge involvement, different versions of the character. He is the most popular comic book character and the most popular DC character at this point. So you understand that he's a big deal and they're going to use anything in their arsenal. And of course, it's, you know, 2022, because of the Batman and because Batman is going to have a huge presence in the Flash movie, he's a huge year for Batman. Well, you know what? It's about time too. Of course, I want my hero, Superman, to be front and center. And hopefully they can do that and fix that as well. Hopefully we see him in Black Adam and Fury of the Gods in 2023. That would be awesome and exciting, wouldn't it? Of course. But I'm a Batman fan as well as a Superman fan. I'm a bigger Superman fan than any other comic book character or character in fiction. But to actually make 2022 the year of the Batman... I think it's awesome and it's nothing to be negative about. And this will not be a Batman movie, even though he's going to play a big role in the Batman, because that's his movie, and in the Flash movie. And that's okay. Did people call Flashpoint a graphic novel, a Batman story, because Batman's in it? And Batman plays a huge role in Flashpoint, the graphic novel. Don't forget that. Is that a Batman... Is that a Batman graphic novel? Were you calling it a Batman graphic novel? No. It's because you've got an agenda. It's because you're sour because certain elements or your favourite director was, you know, rejected. And I get it because I love Snyder too. And I believe all tours are the future of comic book movies and all movies. I think with June doing so well and with the Snyder Cut doing so well, you know, not only on HBO Max but also on hard copy as well, I think the future is all tours rather than these processed, canned movies that the MCU are putting out. But still, it doesn't mean you can go around saying something that is not true. It is not a Batman movie. It's a Barry Allen movie. But Andy and Barbara have been very clear about this. They have not been dishonest. They're using, they're utilising the Flash's abilities to reboot the universe. They've already told us that. They've told us that on social media, and they've told us that on last year's DC fandom. They haven't lied. They're not pretending to do something, uh, you know, untoward and say, well, this is a Flash movie. Well, no, no, we're not rebooting the universe. They've told us. It's like we're starting again. So they're not lying. They've been very upfront with the situation. The DCEU is being rebooted. RIP, the DCU Earth One. We move forward. And hopefully we can celebrate what's gone before because Andy and Barbara have told us on multiple occasions, I've told you on multiple occasions, you know, we're rebooting it, but everything will be remembered and nothing will be forgotten, which is a way to celebrate what's gone before. They could pick and choose what gets deleted and, you know, what doesn't get deleted. We're going to have to wait and see. The best thing to do instead of spreading rumours and lies and making your own minds up before you've seen the movie or even a trailer for the movie, we're getting a sneak peek on October the 16th at DC Fandom. So you can make a more informed, educated opinion about this movie. But don't go around calling it a Batman movie because then you have to call the Flashpoint graphic novel a Batman comic. And it's not a Batman comic, is it now? I was so excited to see this picture, uh, you know, an, um, an amazing thing, and as I say, I, I've never heard of Red Death, but I did come to the conclusion, even before I heard of Red Death, that this must be a Batman with Flash abilities, but this concept for Red Death is awesome, and now I, I, I'm desperate for them to use it, because I think it would be absolutely fantastic, I mean, come on. Come on, let's be honest about this. You would love this. I would love this. And it's so ambitious. And you know what? The more I think about my theory of Red Death rebooting the DCEU and not Barry Allen, it makes sense. And then the final battle is in the Central Earth, the Central Universe. 
you know, again, you know, Barry Allen against all these Batmen. How awesome would that be? But think about this. What if Grant Gusting's The Flash and Ezra Miller's The Flash have to join forces to defeat these Batmen and to defeat Red Death? Now, don't forget what I've read out. Basically, Red Death is dying. So, the thing we have to kind of talk about here, like we kind of touched on already, is Red Death Michael Keaton's Batman. I think so. Now, this would be very interesting and, you know, and, and controversial to make Michael Keaton's Batman a villain because we go back to the kind of Mark Hamill, Luke Skywalker, uh, you know, I mean, even, even Mark Hamill called him Jake Skywalker. So if he's not kind of the Batman we, we know and love from those two movies, people could be upset. But for, look, listen to me. Whatever they do in this movie is going to be controversial. People are going to be upset. So my advice to Andy, and of course he doesn't need my advice, just make the best fucking movie possible. And for me, making a movie where Red Death reboots the franchise, reboots the universe, and then fights Barry Allen in the central universe after Flashpoint, that's awesome. And that's great. And for me, this could be such an epic, epic movie. It's sounding like it, so that's my theory. Do you think I'm right? Do you think I'm wrong? Comment down below. I know a lot of you are going to start saying, no, Michael Keaton isn't Red Death, he's not going to die. He's got a big future. We know people like Grace Randolph were saying he was going to do Batman Beyond and maybe another Batman movie. Who knows? Michael Keaton isn't getting any younger. These kind of movies take a lot of energy. So we we'll have to wait and see. I mean, he hasn't stopped Clint Eastwood, but Clint Eastwood isn't really doing action movies, is he? I would love Michael Keaton's Batman to feature more after the Flash movie. But here's the thing, he's not, one thing I can tell you, he's not gonna be the brand new Batman, he's not. As far as I'm concerned, the brand new Batman of the DC live action universe is Robert Pattinson. He's young, he's robust, he's a great actor, he's fantastic, he's your brand new Batman. And you know what my theory is about the Batman Earth 2 being the new central universe. The more I think about that, the, the more determined and certain I am this is going to happen. So I don't believe that Michael Keaton's Batman is going to replace Ben Affleck. But then you could say to yourself, well, maybe Red Death is Batfleck. You just don't know. Now, apparently he did, he shot some scenes in the first week of September, including, in, according to the Flash Movie News account over on Twitter. They're not an official, they're not an official source really, but they seem to get information relayed so if he only spent a week filming it and he's not doing any more that's not a lot really that i kind of guess from the beginning we would see him in the first act before flashpoint happens before barry goes back to save his mother's life so he wouldn't be doing much anyway so this could go towards saying that when flashpoint when the universe is rebooted that a Batfleck is deleted. I don't know. I don't have any information to tell me either way. It's very intriguing though, isn't it? What's going to happen? Maybe he only did that week and he's coming back to do more. We don't know. But there's one thing about this movie we can be utterly sure about. You don't know what's been shot and what hasn't been shot because the only things that have been leaked are things that they've wanted to be, be leaked to promote the hype of the movie. You haven't seen anything that they don't want you to see. Now we've had this discussion so many times. So although the Flash movie news account said he was shooting in the first week of September, it could have been, you know, could have been the first week, he could have done a month, who knows? But we don't know everything. Nobody apart from Andy Machete knows, you know, he's the only one who knows everything. And so I always said this was the biggest movie of 2022. As a DC fan, it is for me. But let me tell you something. I'm not here to stand the most popular thing, the one that makes the most money. MCU fans love the MCU and celebrate it. Good for them. I have no negativity to say to them. But let me be absolutely clear here. I don't care that the DCEU isn't a box office champion, a consistent box office champion. For me, it's about the movies. Man of Steel, BVS, 
the first Suicide Squad, the first Wonder Woman, Zack Snyder's Justice League, Aquaman, are all fine, fabulous movies. Then you throw Joker into it as well. So the DC live action universe has given us in the 21st century some marvellous movies. Some of those movies may have been controversial, may have been hated by some, may have not made as much money. Let me throw James Gunn's The Suicide Squad in there as well. Let's not forget that movie, another really good movie. So they've given us quality, mostly. There's a couple of stinkers in there, but there's more than a couple of stinkers in the MCU as well. Let's not forget that. So in fact, the DC live action universe that we've had since um, December 20, sorry, uh, when was it? Whatever it was, July or whenever, uh, 2013, when Man of Steel launched, have given us multiple amazing, great movies. And now we move away from the DCEU very quickly. In the next few minutes, let's discuss this because WandaVision was nominated for 26 Emmy Awards. I think this is disgusting. I don't think this show deserved any nominations. It's a good show. It's a solid show. Just, but just because you do a superhero story, a series set in an old-fashioned 1960s sitcom, it doesn't make you ambitious. It doesn't make you edgy. You're just ripping off a concept. And how long did they use that concept for? Two or three episodes? Then it became an, it, the series became just like the MCU, just like another MCU movie. Now, obviously, they weren't going to stay there. And I like WandaVision. I don't have any issue. I enjoyed WandaVision. I'm not here to shit on WandaVision. But when you're looking at some of the stuff that's won in the past, like 24, Game of Thrones, and etc., etc., for WandaVision, all right, give it a couple of technical nominations. But 26 nominations, like this is one of the best things that's ever happened when it's not. It's despicable. And when something smells bad, it is bad. It's corruption, everyone. It looks like they were under pressure to nominate this so many times. Guess what? I have extremely good news if you don't know already. WandaVision won nothing. Won not one Emmy. In fact, Disney Plus had a very bad night at the Emmys because this is what Disney is. You see, the Warner Brothers created a studio for artistic integrity, to entertain, to give wonder. Disney, Walt Disney created something for the kids. And that's fine. And for the family, that's fine. And they're kind of continuing that now. But it's not an artistic place. It's not a place for all tours. And Warner Brothers today is still a place for all tours. What happened with Snyder was bad, and they dented their reputation, but ultimately, they allowed Dennis Villeneuve to make his June. Hopefully, he'll make umpteen June movies the way he wants to make them. So, even though he's unhappy about day and day, they gave him the freedom, they gave him the budget, and allowed him to make a fucking epic movie from everything we hear. I haven't seen it yet. I hope I can see the movie. Warner Brothers are still the company that the Warner Brothers created all those eons ago. And I'm proud of Warner Brothers. I'm proud of the movies they've given us. I'm proud of the DCEU. They've made mistakes. No one's saying they haven't. But I'd rather support a studio that's given me so much, so much, and they're giving us so much more than support a studio that just gives you processed food, right? Good luck to them. I watch Disney stuff. I'll be watching the Obi-Wan Kenobi um, streaming series next year. I can't wait to see Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan again. I'm a huge Star Wars fan. But everyone talks about the mistakes that have been made in the DCEU. What about the mistakes that have been made in Star Wars? They didn't even have a fucking plan. Zack Snyder, at least, had a plan. And people have criticised him. You may not respect that plan. You may not like that plan. But don't start telling me that WandaVision deserved 26 Emmy nominations. The right people last night won the award. There's murmurings now about the Emmys. Emmys so white. Listen, let me just tell you this, and I know we're away from the DCEU, because this is my little section at the end where we kind of steer away from the DCEU for five minutes. If everyone who got nominated for the Emmys was black, I wouldn't even raise an eyebrow. Because I would believe and respect the Emmy selection panel nominated them not because they're black, 
but because they're hugely talented people. And they're, you know, people in the industry who are black are so talented. So I don't think that all those people won last night at the Emmys because they were white. I believe it's nothing to do with their skin color and because they were the most talented people. That's just my opinion. Our headlines today, Flash movie director, Andy Machete, posts a very, very interesting picture of the Batman and Flash insignia together, all in red. Is it red death? Is it what we think it is? Was it just a bit of fun, a day after Batman day? I think it's red death. I think red death is the one who reboots the DCEU and not Barry Allen's The Flash. And I think we are getting a huger, bigger, epic movie than we ever thought we was. This has been the DCEU Daily. I'm Mick, your host with the most. Just ask your girlfriends and your wives. I will see you tomorrow for more DCEU Daily. Keep it here for news and views daily. Until tomorrow, I'll see you again. Goodbye for now.